Hi, this is Genesis Ward, educator for Odyssey Nail Systems. I just wanted to share with you my entry in the Nail Pro 3D Nailapalooza category with the theme of Home for the Holidays. I began using a sheet protector uh, with the graph paper on the inside and because of the rules dictating that the artwork can be no more than one inch wide one inch high and two inches long, I drew those guidelines onto the sheet protector. One thing that I learned from this process was that I should have drawn the lines onto the graph paper instead because the monomer melted the Sharpie marker and kind of destroyed my guidelines a little bit. But also, as the product cured, because acrylic shrinks when it cures and the sheet protector is flexible, it actually cured in kind of a wave or a little bit distorted. So all these lines that I'm doing right now with the metal don't really matter because I had to add even more acrylic to it to try to be able to file it into an even surface. The metal scoring through the acrylic did help to add a little bit of texture because as you can see now, when I did a wash of the background with different stain colors of paint that helped to give it a more wood grain feeling to it because the wood surface is not completely perfect. I looked up various different patterns of wood online to try to figure out the best pattern to do. Overall, I think that I could have done this a little bit further apart and maybe in a lighter color because at the end I feel like the lines were a little bit too bold. However, I was very impressed with the fact that I was able to connect all of my pieces together and it looked like one solid wood table. I did take a drill bit that I had gotten from Atwood that kind of looks like a little disc and score across all of those lines. Once I was finished with the piece and ready to cut it apart, I went ahead and completely um, use that bit to score completely through them and file all the edges smooth. Now we're going to move into my macaroni and cheese. The biggest struggle for this is I wanted my macaroni noodles to look completely natural as much as possible to have the little holes on the inside of the noodle even when they were covered with cheese. So this was my um, innovation I guess or kind of one of my happier moments during this project is by taking a needle that you would use for sewing tracks into hair, I would hope that the little bit of a bend in it would make my noodles appear more bent instead of just straight across. I coated it with uh, three different colors of gel polish to give it the macaroni sauce noodle color that I wanted, as well as to make sure that it cured properly. By coating the needle at first with the product that I showed in the, the first part of that um, segment, it allowed the noodle to come completely off of the needle fairly easily. I had to work it back and forth a little bit after I was done curing it and cleansing it, but it, it did come off in a total complete piece allowing me to cut them into the little tiny noodles that you see in my jar here. At the beginning um, I was creating the white bowl for the noodles to be able to go into and my biggest goal with all of the dishes that were completed in here was that I put as much detail into them making them look like the Corel Ware, Cornell Ware, however you say it. Um, that typically you would see in a holiday dinner setting, I guess. Even when I use the cutting tool to pinch off or cut my noodles to the length that they need to be, that hole still stays just as open as it was before. And I eventually I put these little noodles into the their container and cover it with the cheese and I made it a point to make sure that you could see at the end some of the noodle holes still sticking up. I coated that um, the white bowl with gel to give it a really good shiny clean finish and then as you saw I put a bunch of clear gel on the bottom and cured that so it's only the top very thin layer that has the actual noodles 
so I didn't have to create as many noodles to make the dish look full. And dealing with gel, it's kind of hard to cure it properly with using thicker layers. So having the clear as a base, I could do everything a lot thinner to make sure that the product cured. Now I'm making my little tiny bits for my sweet potato. The thought process behind this was um, by creating little circular discs first, it would be kind of like you're taking a sweet potato and cutting it as you would regularly and then chopping it into the smaller pieces. Next, I started making the straw for my cinnamon eggnog that my son is drinking for his Thanksgiving meal. This was a little bit of a challenge. Um, I'm sorry I don't show me making the glass of the actual eggnog and filling it. I tried to record as much as I could, but um, this was my first time doing a, a longer video like this. So the most difficult part of making that glass was the little cinnamon stick. When I tried to use the larger piece at first to wrap it around the needle, it kept on coming apart, it was too thick, and I had a lot of issues with it. So I then cut a thinner piece off of that, dip it into the acetone to make it a little bit more flexible, wrap that single piece around the needle, similar to how the cinnamon sticks that you can buy in the store look. So it allowed it to be very, very thin and go inside of the glass and look size appropriate. I think being everything being sized well was really, really important with this in relation to the size of my person. If I had have had a really tiny turkey and then a really big glass of the cinnamon eggnog, it wouldn't be proportionate. So one of the advice I guess are pieces of advice that I would have to give you when you're looking at these pieces is try to make everything as proportionate as possible with the rules or the guidelines that you're given. As you can see, I really, really struggled with this one just because I wanted it to stay that perfectly round. And when you see this in person, it really does look like a little cinnamon stick because of how it was wrapped around the needle. It has that little bit of a shimmer to it from the brown sugar, cinnamon mixture. It was really pretty awesome. And as you can see the final, I added it into my cinnamon eggnog. I have a little detailing on the, the glass with both a chrome liquid gel as well as uh, some stamping images for Christmas. Next we move into the container for my dressing or um, I guess depending on where you're from, what you would call it, um, stuffing, what have you. The mold that I'm using for this was clay that you can buy from Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics, something like that. Uh, I took a oval shaped polish bottle that I had that was um, a little bit over an inch wide. I had to kind of file this down some to be within the requirements but I pressed it into that and then covered it in saran wrap to allow me to use that as the mold. I would definitely say in the future it would be easier to use something like the, the handy tack that's a little bit more flexible to do it with, but ultimately it gave me a very good result. I just wasn't able to use it for much more than this portion. All the dressing that's going in there, I pre-made the same way that I did the sweet potatoes by laying them out, um, poking and prodding them with different uh, dotting tools, as well as my color, my cutters to give it texture. And then I actually used the real seasoning there to add a re realistic finishing touch. Now I'm doing the almond bark. All I did after I created that marble with the white and the red in a very thin sheet was to cut it in as small pieces as I can. And the base that I'm putting them on now, I used a dark brown gel, did a thin sheet of that uh, a few times to build up the thickness. 
added clear to that in a few layers. And as you can see, I didn't do them thin enough because that brown had a harder time curing in the lamp. So definitely learn to take a little bit more time with that to make sure that it cures all the way through. As I'm cutting the almond bark into pieces, I actually have to put them back in the lamp again because the center still wasn't completely cured. So it was a bit of a mess, but I absolutely love the result of the almond bark, or I'm sorry, peppermint bark in the end. Um, it really looked like you could just pick them up and eat them. And that's what I'm struggling with right there. I had to put the two pieces together to put them back into the lamp because it just did not care. Here is my sugar cookies. Again, using the polymer clay as a mold, I have very small stamps that you would use from Chisel Company that they would use to impress into the acrylic and then you could fill them in for doing actual nails. So I impressed them into the polymer clay and then filled them in directly with a sugar cookie color. The problem with this is, which ended up being a good thing actually, um, once the acrylic was completely dry, I popped them out of there and some of the polymer clay melted because of the monomer reacting, or reacting with the polymer clay. And ultimately it looked kind of cool. It looked like the sugar cookies had like little bits of sugar in all of their creases, even though I spent a lot of time trying to clean all of that white polymer clay out. So I'm not sure how I could have done that any differently for the next time, but definitely don't put the acrylic directly onto that polymer clay because it will melt. This piece that I'm doing right now is getting ready for my collard greens and the little bits of ham that are inside the collard greens. I kind of, um, in a lot of these, I worked back and forth on several different pieces at once, which that's, it made the video a little bit harder to do to follow because I'm not working on just one thing at a time. It's more time efficient if you can try to tackle a couple of different things while something else is curing in the lamp or what have you. So I'm also making um, the little bit of the, the stamens that would be a part of the collard greens to add in there with it. And then uh, when I pull out the wire here, I'm starting to make the base for my broccoli. I love, love my broccoli. So for the collard greens, I laid out that really thin sheet of acrylic and tried to score it as much as possible and I ended up like wrinkling up the whole sheet protector to add more texture to the collard greens because that's what they look like. Um, the broccoli, I tried to dry out each bead of acrylic as much as possible before I laid it down onto the sheet to give it the texture of the little flowerettes in the broccoli. And by adding, as you can see, like um, kind of to the right side of my hand there, I put a little bit of the green onto three or four pieces of wire, separated the wire out, and then added the dry beads of the flowerettes onto each one of them covering them in the green acrylic afterwards to tie everything together. Here I'm trying to cut up the little bits of collard green. I had a harder time peeling them apart and what have you because the acrylic layers, when they are very thin, they wanted to stick more together. So I ended up opening each piece of them again and trying to trim them as randomly as possible to make it look like I had chopped them up with a knife. Lesson learned with this is um, I wouldn't have crumpled it up as much into like the little ball that I did. I think cutting them into the random pieces, especially since I scored it in the beginning, would have given it enough veins to make it look realistic when I added it in with all of the sauce. This is my lemon meringue pie. Probably the most dangerous thing that I did out of everything. Um, the Dremel vibrates a whole lot when you're doing this and I really just wanted to show everyone that I built this lemon meringue pie from 
bottom up. It wasn't just the top coating of the meringue that made it. And um, knowing that I was gonna cut that slice out ahead of time, I tried to cure the lemon colored gel as much as possible. But again, I had that same problem. So that's why you see me sticking it back in and out of the lamp because that center just wasn't completely cured. So be very, very careful if you decide to do something like this. I was holding on to that little piece of, or the lemon, the whole lemon meringue pie with every death grip that I could to make sure that um, the Dremel didn't take it away from me and I end up injuring myself. And then going in with a small ball bit that I got from Atwood um, Industries, he sells all different kinds of drills, or I'm um, sorry, e-files and e-file bits to finish off the detailed portion of that. That particular bottle is the same one that I used to make the mold of the base for the lemon meringue pie. So in order to have that same shape and rebuild out the pie tin portion of it to make it look like um, I really did take that slice out. I just covered it in a little bit of clear, trying to match up the slice that I took out. And then I recover it with the silver foil, which is a mess, but it really works awesome to create that foil looking base. Um, at first I used the adhesive to put the two pieces together just to kind of secure it a little bit and then went back in with some more clear acrylic to reinforce it completely. I will then coat it with gel before I add in the little pieces of um, aluminum or silver foil to it to make sure that they meld into it and it looks as much like the tin as possible. This stuff again is horrible to work with but I was really happy with the result um, and much happier with this than if I had of say coated it with a silver chrome or something like that because it gave it more texture just like what your normal tin for the pie would be. Now I'm finishing off the greens. I had pre-made that container as you saw earlier. Um, normally with the greens you'd have a little bit of liquid in the bottom so I tried to coat this with a few different colors of green to make sure it would be contrasting from the actual bits of green um, greens and ham that I have in there and found that the more that I stirred it around and, and played with it the more natural appearance that it gave with some pieces being more glossy and some pieces being more matte from them being dipped in the sauce and what have you. Overall pretty fun to play with and then I add my little pieces of ham in there and allow it to cure. By using the clear as a base even though I added in the pigments to it to give it some color I didn't have to worry as much about it curing because it was pretty transparent in a very thin layer on the bottom so I'm sure there's some uncured gel in there on the underneath but overall this piece actually cured really well. The next thing that I'm going to make is going to be my pumpkin muffins or um, I, I actually make pumpkin cream cheese muffins for the holiday but I would say these look a little bit more just like pumpkin muffins. I start off by covering the brush with a piece of cellophane and then adding the clear onto the outside just to build up the cup. I wanted to do this pretty thick because I knew that I was going to come in with my French backfill bit to create the corrugations in the paper lining of this and if I did not do it thick enough then it would end up filing it through. So I spent a little bit more time with this trying to press it out and make it flat before I um, took it off of the, the top and finished curing it. Be very careful when you're doing this. I did clean out each one of them every time I did it to make sure that my lines were very evenly spaced. 
I used soft white when I was creating the cupcake paper. So that way, as I drilled through it, it would actually be appear more transparent in the end. This is the base for the pecan pie that I made. Um, again, using a small polish bottle that was less than an inch wide and covered in saran wrap. So as I built it out, it would, um, or once it would dry, it would easily come off of the polish bottle. I found that the ONS Nudes Acrylic Collection really worked well for this entire project. On This is uh, an example after I file the outside edges. I just have to file the top portions and add a little bit more acrylic on the inside. While that was finished curing and everything, I made my little silverware for Jeremiah to have. I decided that he should just have his fork and his knife ready to eat. I used a lamination sheet because it was a little bit stronger than what the sheet protectors are. I lined it up with his hands and then created the silverware size based upon his actual hands. I drilled inside of his hands uh, with the little tiny ball bit again from Atwood to allow the silverware to slip right down in the middle of his hands. This is the cheesecake. I did it in layers by doing that um, dark brown crust first, then adding on um, the natural colors of the cheesecake on top of it and popping it out. I filed all of the edges of that really smooth so that it would be like you slid a regular cheesecake out of a springform pan. Uh, adding all the details to my pecan pie, um, I used various different colors of natural or combinations, I should say, of natural colored powders to create all the little pecans on the top of it. On the inside of that, it was all um, clear gel with some brown added into it to try to allow it to cure as good as possible. This was the plate that I made for him to actually eat off of using the same method as I did before by adding in the white acrylic to the polymer clay covered in saran wrap to allow it to come away from it quickly. Every time I popped out one of those pieces to get rid of the lines from the saran wrap, I had to add that little bit of extra acrylic on there, helping to smooth it out, make it easier for filing and making it be thick enough to actually hold up. And I used a hand file for most of them. I found that it was a little bit more consistent in trying to make it a very even surface. This is a brief portion of me doing my ham. This uh, is another one of my favorites. Um, I'd probably say this and the macaroni and cheese were pretty amazing to me when they all came together. By combining this really intense translucent pink with the brown, it gave it kind of the same hue that ham does because when you look at a ham it's got a little bit of shimmer into it and a little bit of depth with the layering of the crust and what have you so this was my after testing several color combinations together this was my ultimate um, color combination and when you look at this in person it really looks like an actual ham after I did this, I coated it with a little bit of glitter so that as I created the spiral portion of the ham and cut into it, it would leave a little bit of, the, of that behind to emulate the crust that brown sugar has when you put it in the oven. Each one of these is a slice of the ham to act as if it was like coming right off of it. And then I added a little bit of white in the center to make it look like the ham bone in the, the center portion. With this, as long as you're using it really, really thin, giving it that little bit of time to be able to cure, it's um, very easy to get it off of the clear laminated sheet and manipulate it to make it look like 
the the ham is being cut away. Super happy with this one. And you can see I added that little bit of glitter on there as I was going. And by building the ham on this, like the base, like I did, it allowed it to sit flat on the table once it was put into place, or on the plate, I should say, and then put into place. I don't have any videos of the turkey, but this was the end result of the turkey. I used real Christmas tree leaves to put in behind that. And look at all the ooey gooey macaroni and cheese. This, all this detailing on the sides was done with various different stamping plates. I tried to do ombre to make it look like the real Corel wear would be. And this is the final video of everything put together. For the center pieces, I did the pine cones the same way that you would do the petals of a rose, a 3D rose. I used Arabella forms to create the poinsettias and with that it helps to keep them more rounded and a little bit more flexible as I was placing them inside of my centerpiece. The gravy boat was another really hard one to do and I'm sorry I don't have any videos of that. It didn't actually even make it into my final entry because I left it in my lamp. I was running down to the minute on this one uh, getting everything turned in because I just kept on finding more things to add. Uh, my sugar cookies there, I used chrome on the outside of clear acrylic to give it that um, aluminum pan feel to it. The cheesecake, I added on the little drizzles with gel to make it look like the chocolate and um, vanilla glaze that I used on my actual one for Thanksgiving. The detailing on the sweet potato or pumpkin pie, whatever you want was um, done with the same colors as I used for the crust. The candles, I used little tubes from your coffee stir sticks, coated them with gel and pulled them out so they are hollow on the inside of that, but it gave the perfect shape for this. I hope this has helped you guys with your next 3D art project. This is Genesis with Sozo Education and Beauty Supply. Please visit us at any of our social media sites to learn more about our supply house and education that we provide.